Welcome back, everyone, to TV5 News at 9. It is time now for Education Matters. Of course, we're here with Dr. Craig Douglas, who's calling in this morning. So, Dr. Douglas, good to hear from you. How are you? I'm well, Blake. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Not bad for a Monday. We are continuing our celebration, though, of Black History Month and talking about Afro-Latino trailblazers in history. We're going to start with an activist, Julia de Burgos. Just tell us a little bit about her achievements. Yeah, I want to credit, uh, I'm at Bay City Central High School today, and I want to credit Mrs. Hildinger for this topic. I thought it was a great way to incorporate Latinos into Black History Month and looking at Afro-Latino figures from history. She actually gave the students probably 50 or more names of Afro-Latino figures from history to research. So I picked two that were maybe less familiar to me and mm -hmm. challenged myself a little bit more. This first person, Julia de Burgios, lived 1914 to 1953. It was a short unique life only 39 years of living but she completed high school and college by age 19 she became a teacher i guess that's one thing that drew me to her background blake to be honest with you yeah and then she emerged as a poet and an activist uh, she published three books wrote many poems uh, one of her more famous ones translates into english as my death poem uh, she became a nationalist and her work centered on securing Puerto Rico's independence. So she was fearless. She served as Secretary General of the Daughters of Freedom, the women's branch of the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party, and became a civil rights activist for women of all cultures, but especially African American and Afro American uh, cultures. So that's one hero that I, I selected from that long list in that Spanish one class that I visited just a week ago. Yeah, I think it's great. And uh, I, like, I like the fact that she, you know, really had quite the, uh, you know, career, I guess you could say, for lack of a better term, in the short time she was with us. So we want to move to an athlete, though. Tell us about John Carlos and his accomplishments in track and field. So I remember John Carlos when I was in high school. He was an, an excellent sprinter. In fact, at one time, he ran a 100-yard dash in 9.1 seconds, which is an extremely wow. uh, fast time. Made the Olympics team in 68 and competed and earned a bronze medal in the 200-meter dash. But that's not what he was most famous for. He and a teammate, teammate Tommy Smith, uh, when they received their medals at the Olympics, uh, raised their hands and closed fists in defiance and showed opposition to African-American oppression that was in the United States at that time. Now, I was in high school, and I remember it was a very big deal, covered on TV for days, and there were a lot of people that were emotionally charged uh, on the, uh, the symbolism. Uh, some took sides in favor of Carlos and Smith, and some were adamantly against them. They ultimately were stripped of their medals, uh, right or wrong. They, they, they were not able to keep their medals at the time. Well, Carlos kind of circled back, uh, ended up working with the Olympic Committee in the 84 Summer Games that we hosted here in the United States, and then became uh, an inductee of the Hall of Fame, the USA Track and Field Hall of Fame. So he kind of came back full circle. Um, it wrote a book uh, on his life and his story, and you know, was elected to uh, the Hall of Fame, as I said, but also had a statue of himself and Smith erected uh, in their honor at San Jose State University. And then in uh, 2008, they were uh, both given the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage. Those of us that watch the ESPY Awards know that that's a big, a big award in that um, uh, celebration yeah. so he's uh, living now in Los Angeles and has kind of come full circle uh, so the two names I selected from Mrs. Hillinger's list um, that I thought viewers might uh, either have heard of or might be interested in I would encourage people to perhaps Google uh, Afro-Latino uh, figures and see what 
they might be able to uncover during Black History Month. I mean, that's one of the purposes of the month, right, Blake, is, yeah. to, is to study people that perhaps we either know just a little about or, or very little uh, to expand our own knowledge base. Agreed. These are great choices, so thanks for bringing those to us. And uh, anything else you want to add as we continue to celebrate Black History? Maybe a challenge or you challenge yeah, yourself. It's, it's hard to believe the month is almost half over, yeah. so I, I encourage uh, moms and dads and grandpa and grandmas at home to sit down with their, their children and to take a look at the web and to read up on some of these wonderful figures. A couple names on that list that I know I was attracted to that I've heard of a lot about. One is our own Miguel Cabrera. Mm -hmm. A very interesting career in life, of course, probably going into the Hall of Fame. And then a Roberto Clemente, who died a hero um, on, on Un, unfairly perhaps but went down trying to to save people that were victims of uh, really bad natural disaster so it, there are many afro latino figures in history i encourage people to take a look at the web and read up and see what they can uncover very good dr douglas thanks for calling in this morning this is great thank you and be well Yes, of course, you as well. And if you want more information about today's topic, of course, check out the lifestyle page on our website at WNEM.com.